So every now and then, Rogan will hit us out of the blue uh, with an opinion out of left field. Um, now, it's very often he hits us with opinions out of right field nowadays. There's no denying that. Uh, there's a number of areas where I'd take issue with him. And, you know, last time I was on the show, we kind of got into it over DeSantis a little bit. And I tried to talk him out of his DeSantis support. And, um, you know, I made points that disarmed him in the moment. But then a few shows later, he's right back to saying similar stuff about DeSantis. So look, I tried. <laughs> I tried. I did what I could to try to say, hey, here's the policies you say you support. And then here's how DeSantis is an opponent of all of these things. And in the moment it landed, but then after the fact, if it didn't stick, you know, what am I supposed to do? I could only try, I could only do so much to try to get the argument across. But anyway, every now and then he hits us, like the the classic Candace Owens debate where he basically dismantles her because she is hanging on to this belief that climate change isn't real, like she's in a fundamentalist religion and the religion is climate science denial. He destroyed her over that. He destroyed Dave Rubin, when it come to, came to the issue of government regulations, uh, basically to, to protect safety standards and, and the labor market, etc. I think he really did a great job on that when Rubin was just regurgitating libertarian talking points without having any idea what he was actually saying. Uh, well, now we get another instance like this. Uh, the Babylon Bee is basically the conservative version of the Onion. And uh, suffice to say, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I think I think they're really goofy and bad and not funny and uh, very ideological. I think the Onion, yeah, the Onion leans left, but I don't think they're like putting their politics first and foremost. I think they put what is funny first and foremost, which is why I think they're more consistently funny than something like the Babylon Bee. Here's Rogan getting really pissed off at the Babylon Bee guy because the Babylon Bee guy is making a terrible argument vis-a-vis -vis abortion and this idea that you can't have someone who is a, a Christian who talks to another person who's a Christian and maybe they were on the fence about something and you convince them to have a child and it's the best decision they have ever made in their life and they love their kids so much they couldn't imagine they were thinking about getting an abortion right. that's real too yeah. that's real too there's also Women who have been raped who should not have to fucking carry some rapist baby. There's women who have been sexually assaulted before the age of 14. There's also, hold on though. Be, but hold on, there's don't also, stop me. Okay. You, that's real too. There's, and we all have to agree. We have to agree on both of those things. There are also though, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you on that point, but I will say there are people who have been born of rape and are alive right now and are pro-life. And they go around speaking, talking That's about how great. I had a right to live. And they, and they will go out there and make an argument, a pro-life case. And they're a ra they're a born of a rape. You don't have a right to tell a 14-year-old girl she has to carry a rapist baby. I'm you just saying just that. I'm just saying that's what you're too. saying? Yeah, I understand what, I understand you, what you're saying. You understand saying what, what I'm saying? Like, you don't have the right to tell my 14-year-old daughter she has to carry her rapist baby. You yeah, understand that? To look that woman in the eye who's, who was the but born listen, of a rape. Do you understand that? That's a 14-year-old child. If you a 14-year-old child gets raped, you say that they have to carry that baby i don't think two wrongs make a right i don't think that's murder, not, I, don't I don't think, think murder that's wrong. Is... oh I, I don't think two wrongs make a right oh my god look every now and then his normie instinct shows and it's glorious you know it happened with the dylan mulvaney thing too where the right was absolutely melting down and doing right wing cancel culture because there was a trans person on a beer can like who cares who cares they cared. They cared a lot. And Joe was like, I'm just going to drink the Bud Light because I don't care. And that's when his normie instinct overrides whatever sort of political stuff uh, a lot of his friends, I think, have, 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 you know, convinced him of. Where there's certain things where he's like, no, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. And this is an example of it here where this guy, by the way, I think there's a reason why Rogan brings us up. Because this guy has a history of uh, being super duper pro-life. To the point where he's repeatedly advocated for even if somebody's raped, even if it's somebody who's underage and is raped, they need to carry that baby to term. Because in this guy's mind, look, it is just murder. From second number one, when you're done having sex, when it's a when it's gametes or zygotes or embryos, that counts as a person with constitutional rights. And even if you are a rape victim and you're 14 years old, you need to carry that baby to term because I say so because that's my politics. And the thing that Rogan does here is he says, well, he personalized it. He's like, well, hold on now. You know, I have daughters. You're telling me if my 14-year-old daughter is raped, she should be forced to carry that baby to term. Are you serious? 
and you're saying early on enough where it could even be like a plan B pill, which fixes it, right? We're talking super early. Even then, you're still saying, no, I'm going to force you to carry that to term. That's just not going to fly, dog. And by the way, the reason why this clip is important too is because this is the mindset that's happening across the country and it's why Republicans are getting draxed in all these direct ballot initiatives on the issue of abortion. Because the American public is not with the far right on the issue of abortion. They had a direct vote on this in Kansas. And the pro-life side went down in flames. A super red state and the people said, no, we want abortion rights. Same thing in Ohio. They did that thing where they're trying to change the percentage in the direct vote to get something to, to pass because Republicans know, hey, if we have a direct vote on, on abortion rights, it's going to pass overwhelmingly with like 58% of the vote. So they tried to make it 60% or higher to pass something. And guess what? They voted on that and the public said, no, 50 plus one is the way to go. If somebody, if we democratically choose something, don't override it. And so now it's a foregone conclusion that they're going to win on the abortion rights front. This is Ohio. Ohio is a red state. It was a Trump state. Kansas, deep red state, they, they're pro-choice. And this happened in the midterms too. The reason, one of the main reasons Republicans lost, apart from the election denialism and being tied to Trump, is the Roe versus Wade being overturned. People were like, no, we don't, we don't agree to that. And so that instead of being a red wave, it was a red trickle. And I think Rogan is very indicative of that same sort of mindset on this front. Because he's like, look, I might meet you somewhere, but I ain't meeting you all the way over there. That's crazy. Forcing a 14-year-old to give birth to their rapist's baby? Like, Jesus Christ, man. So, look, we love the normie uh, Rogan takes. We love the the left-leaning Rogan takes, especially when it's in the face of somebody like the head of the Babylon Bee, who apparently is deeply conservative, or many others, the Candace Owens moment, the Dave Rubin moment. More of these. These are yummy in my tummy. And remember, this guy has cultural influence far outside of any sort of niche political online following. I mean, he's still the number one podcast in the world. So stuff like this. I mean, I think it reflects a sentiment that's already out there, but it might even feed more into that sentiment and um you love to see it hey y'all do me a favor and like and subscribe it helps out big time in the algorithm click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now you know you want to